breaking chains. You know, there's a chain around the neck of America. There are chains around states of the United States and around communities. One of the reasons that those chains are in place is because of the decision made in Roe versus Wade in America that it was okay to murder the unborn. If we want to break those chains, we need to align ourselves with the giver of every good and perfect gift and every one of those precious lives. Today, I'm excited. I have with me a warrior, a crusader that's out breaking chains. Let me introduce you now to Mark Lee Dixon. Mark, how are you, buddy? Hey, doing great. Yeah, good so, to see you. Great to be here. Yeah. So. Uh, Mark and I had the good pleasure here a few weeks ago. We um, both participated in a rally over at City Hall here in Odessa, and I got to listen to this young man speak. I got to hear his heart. So I'm going to kind of turn to you right here, Mark, and, and just ask you, man, tell me who you are and what you're doing. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Mark Lee Dixon, director with Right to Life of East Texas okay. and founder of the Sanctuary City for the Unborn Initiative. And wow. Now let me ask this. Is, is this Right to Life initiative part of the Texas Right to Life or is yeah. that a separate? That's a completely separate group. Okay. Uh, we're friends. Uh, we stand with any and every group that is willing to stand for life. Amen. Right to Life of East Texas specifically has been around since 1976 wow. and we've been fighting uh, from the point of conception till natural death and so it doesn't matter if it's an unborn child or right. someone who's 90 years old in the mm -hmm. the hospital uh, on life support we're going to fight for both of their life uh, tooth and nail well because every life is precious so every life is precious and when we when any one of us takes a thought that is any less than that, we're exposing ourselves to chains. So, Mark, tell me a little bit how you got involved. And I heard your passion out there that day in front of City Hall. How did you get engaged to this degree and this depth? Well, uh, my grandfather, uh, Glenn Canfield Jr., was the Gregg County Republican chair. Okay. And he was also on the board for Right to Life of East Texas. And so growing up, when I would spend the night at grandma's house, okay. uh, my grandfather would be working on in the office on the Right wow. to Life newsletter. And wow. I remember hearing at a ver very early age, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I asked questions, well, what, what was that about? And it was explained to me that that there are some people out in this world who believe it's okay to end the life of a child and grandpa fights against yes. that idea, that yes. idea that, that a, a baby in the womb, yes. uh, that we can take that life. Wow. So, wow. And one of the things that really impacted me, mm -hmm. uh, every year he would have a booth at the Gregg County Fair. Okay. And okay. I'd be really, really small and I'd go up to this booth and they would have these fetal models there. And wow. those fetal models really made an impact on me. Okay. And, and every year I look forward to, to working that fair booth. And as people go by, as, as parents are taking their kids just around the different booths, mm -hmm. we hear kids all the time say, look mom it's a baby and wow. what they're pointing to something wow. like this right here this oh is a 12-week fetal model and uh, what's incredible about mm. that is if you were to take a picture of that face mm -hmm. and put it on facebook mm -hmm. you know what facebook is going to ask you which friend do you want to tag because facebook sees a face there yeah. 
And there is a face there. There is a face there. Absolutely. A fully formed face. Absolutely. Wow, at 12 weeks. 12 weeks. Yeah. And, and you can a see... A precious, precious little life. Absolutely. And you can see facial features and, and those, those arms and legs at earlier stages as well. Sure. But uh, I carry around this one with me, and, and every time I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pray over, over yeah. this regular basis because uh, conversations I have, if someone, uh, who, I, I use Lyft and Uber services a lot, and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a lot of times I'll be talking to the person, and, and they'll be, well, I'm just not sure. Be like, well, <laughs> have you ever seen... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in fact, let me just move this up a little bit closer to you to show you those facial features of this little 12-month-old child. Absolutely. Yeah. And so this was instilled to me, this idea that this is a human being, that me and you both were once this size. That's right. Um, That's right. We, we're not here without having been that right, size. Right, right. <laughs> and it, it's, it's wild to think, you know, that we've just decided it's okay to yeah. take that life. Absolutely. Yeah. Just because that little innocent one cannot defend itself. And, and which what, puts all the more onus of responsibility upon us absolutely. to defend the rights of this precious unborn. Absolutely. And what really got me into uh, what I'm doing right now with the Sanctuary City for the Unborn Initiative is mm -hmm. uh, I would... I was driven out to that sidewalk to share the gospel of Jesus Christ on the, at the abortion clinics. Okay. And so from Longview, Texas, and that's about an, an hour from uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, and that's where the closest surgical and medical abortion clinic was to, to where we're at in Longview. Okay. And as I would go out there on that sidewalk, this abortion facility in Shreveport is called Hope Medical Group for Women. Horrible name for abortion facility. They would do about 100 abortions a week. At 20 every Tuesday. Did you hear that? 100 abortions a week. 20 every Tuesday, 30 every Thursday, and about 50 every Saturday. And what I like to do to help put that in perspective for people is uh, let's look at school massacres. Mm -hmm. Because... Because they get a lot of coverage, don't they? Do. They do, absolutely. And, and rightfully so. Any time innocent absolutely. life is taken, you know, we, we it need to... It ought to get attention. Absolutely. It ought to be a wake-up call. And every Tuesday at the abortion clinic, about 20 innocent lives lost, that's like a Parkland school massacre. And if you think about all the lives that were shown on TV uh, of having been lost in that horrible, horrible massacre. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was right to show those, those innocent children. Right. Um, it was right to, sh to have to a... To show their faces. To, to have a prayer vigil. It was right to, to, to really remember those lives. Yes. That it is a horrible thing when these kind of things happen. Every Thursday, you got 30 innocent lives. Yeah. Well, that's like a Virginia Tech massacre. Yeah. I remember where I was when... The Virginia Tech massacre took place. Yeah. And, you know, my, my eyes were glued, and I was praying to God, please, God, let the killing stop. Well, uh, you know, in, in, in Odessa, Midland, Texas, we had a shooter here Absolutely. a few years ago. We all know how, how that ravaged our communities and, and the fear that, that ensued. But we're, we're talking about very glibly allowing 30 abortions on a Thursday. And, and we should view each one of those as separate massacres. And yeah. we should say that that should never happen. And we need to do everything in our power to make say sure. No. Yeah. To, to say no. I mean, if, if there was a school shooting every single Two time, two to three days a week yeah. here in Odessa. Yeah. I guarantee you, people would be up in arms, wanting to put an end to it. Right. And so, do we have that same kind of of a passion for smaller children? Right. Uh, children that I mean, it's a child, it's a human being, yeah. and so many of us, when we see the ultrasound 
yeah. and we see that baby moving around. Yeah. What I enjoy doing is uh, I, I take women to ultrasound appointments on mm -hmm. a somewhat regular basis, uh, mm -hmm. and when I get to do that, well, what do I do beforehand? I, I take them to a really good restaurant yeah. because I like to see that baby with a full tummy. Yeah. I like to see that baby active and moving around. Yeah. And it's amazing to watch. Yes, it is. I, I'm blessed to have six children, 18 grandchildren. And, and I love when that life begins to make itself known where you can visibly see it. Uh, does it mean just because it's not born sitting beside me that it's not a child, that it's not a life? No, that is life in mother's womb, kicking and moving and growing. And in what we saw at the, the abortion facility that we'd reach out, we would see lives saved. We would see women choose, to, to, to choose life. Yes. And the message we constantly gave was trust in the Lord with all your heart Amen. and lean not on your own understanding which has brought you here right. but acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways yeah. and He will direct your, your path. path away from that place exactly and we would see and we would let them know that you know God has chosen them to be yes. a good mother to yes. that child yes and we three words that most controversial outside of abortion facilities. The word murder, which, I mean, we don't stand out there and say, you're murderers, murderers yeah. but, but what we do say that, you know, when we talk to them and we, we say, look, you know, it's, this is the, the abortionist in there knows what he's doing. Yes. The, the abortionist who is a Sunday school teacher, who is also an OBGYN, who one day delivered twins at the hospital down the road, and then he came over to that abortion facility and ended the lives of, of 27 innocent children. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's murdering those children. Yes. And that's exactly what it is. It's murder. Yes. Well, some people don't want to call it that, but that's what it is. That's what well, the abortionist is doing. Exactly. And, and, and that's the way the enemy works, and that's the way he puts chains around people's necks, is, is he misnomers, if you will. He absolutely uh, confuses, brings confusion, waters down, yeah. uh, anesthetizes, if you will, the thought process. But all the more reason it needs to be called what it is. Absolutely. And abortion is a very nice term for it. I mean, the abortion is a termination of a pregnancy. Right. But I mean, what are we talking about? We're talking about the termination of a human life. Yes. And put it in perspective. It, it, it's just mind blowing of what we're actually talking about. We're talking about ripping the arms, crushing the skull, injecting poison into the heart of a child. Okay. So, so let's, let's fast forward that little one. Would you do that to that little one-year-old? What would you think about anyone that would do that to your one-year-old child? Or let's go forward three more years at four years old. What would you think about those kinds of vile atrocities manifesting on your four-year-old child? People, there is no difference. It's life. It's life. We've got to wake up. Absolutely. The two other words that I find most controversial outside of uh, abortion facilities, the word Jesus, because people don't want to bring Jesus into the equation. Right. And, and I think part of the reason of that is because when you bring Jesus into the equation, if I tell you that Jesus believes in you, Yes. That that's a weighty thing yes, right there. Yes. And, and that he loves you? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that he, and that he has plans for you. Absolutely. And he has plans absolutely. for this little precious Definitely. child. That's convicting. And tied to that, the last word, mother. Um, mm. that when you say that God believes that you can be a great mother to that child, yes. it just put so much weight and we're, we're not trying to no. you know manipulate women no. or anything no, but no, no, no. we're trying to give them the truth because truth sets free truth breaks Absol chains absolutely and when people realize that god has that they didn't get 
pregnant by accident. I mean, they may have seen it as an accident, but ultimately in the sovereign right. hand of God. Because God is God. Because Absolutely. God is the one that allows the conception. Because Absolutely. God is the one that designed the conception of the egg and the seed. This is God's work. This is God's business. So when we take it, when we take it into our own hands, we are taking God out of the equation, and we will reap the consequences Absolutely. of that decision. And that's why I love what you just said. If everyone would know, the moment they will cease leaning under their own understanding and begin to acknowledge God, God runs to meet them. God runs to yeah. meet us. I was a wretched man, a sinner yeah. among sinners, as, as Paul said. But let me tell you, God welcomes we prodigal sons, we prodigal children with open, loving arms. And He will do it even after you have made that mistake. Because see, here's the way the enemy of our soul works. You make one mistake. He, he entices you into the mistake, first off. Right. Entices you into a, a compromising situation even through the lust of our flesh. And then the conception. And then... The horrific thoughts, the fear. So then he starts to beat on a, a young woman. Just, let me tell you, I'm speaking for 23 years, Mark Lee. We've been working, and many of the women, the hundreds of women we've worked with, many of their root issues lie mm. in having aborted their precious babies. And then the enemy persuades them to another escape, if you will, through drugs or alcohol or abusive relationships because now they feel less than. They feel shame and guilt because now the enemy is beating them over the head with shame, guilt, and condemnation. And so they're trying to escape that and numb that down when all that had to happen was what you just said. Even at that moment, if a mistake has been made, understand, in God's eyes, He's bigger. He's bigger. And He loves you, and He loves this precious baby. And He wants you to be the mother that He saw you to be when He allowed that conception. And, and for those women who've had, that, had an abortion, Yes. I was talking to a woman this morning who was my Lyft driver, actually. And really? She had had an abortion, okay. uh, but she would found forgiveness in Jesus Christ, and Praise she is, is hoping that the Lord will use oh, her wow. past yes. to reach others. Wow. And that's the same message we gave before someone was um, going about into getting, to about make, to get an abortion. Yeah is the same message afterwards, that it's still trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean yes. not on your own understanding. Yeah. And all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Yes. And, you know, we see all the time throughout Scripture people that have done horrible things. We've all done horrible things. Yes. And the enemy wants us to dwell on, on the, the horrible, horrible things. things. But the Lord wants us to... To move past. Absolutely. And while He's the, the enemy, God of restoration... Absolutely. He's the God of restoring us out of the pits that we have dug. Okay. And just as the, now the enemy wants, uh, wants to normalize our sin. He wants right. us to, to say to others it's okay. Right. But the Lord. Misery loves company. Absolutely. But the Lord wants us to tell people it's not okay right. and to point to his standard. Yes. And you know, we have such a great God because not oh. only does He knit us together in yes. our mother's womb, that yes. He is the knitter yes. uh, in the womb, but He's also the knitter in our, in our lives throughout. Yes. in our throughout. relationships. Absolutely. And, and He will repair. Uh, yes. how, how many times have we maybe got a snag in our, our jacket or, or shirt and right. we ended up going to our mother or grandmother right. and, and they, they knit, it, knit it for us? Repair. So. Exactly. You know, I think uh, there, there's a few things you need to under, understand that, that we can look at according to God's Word. I think back, first of all, 
we've just come through the Christmas season. Absolutely. And, you know, what is it that moves us so in that season but an appreciation of a precious baby? Not just any baby in this scenario, but basically the son of the living God. Precious, precious, precious. And I look at, I look at Hannah, and I think about Hannah's longing and yearning. And most women that I have dealt with, they long for this precious child. Amen. Because it, it works in God's plan to complete them as a person. Absolutely. Well, this abortion facility I was talking about, they were actually looking at crossing the border of the Louisiana-Texas border to a little place called Wascom, Texas. Population of Wascom is 2,189, very small city. Starbucks isn't going to go there, you know, right. a mall's not going to pop up. Uh, they have a great barbecue place, but, but, you know, it's a small city. And that abortion facility was at one time looking at crossing the border. And the whole, this was in a, an old newspaper article from the Marshall News Messenger. And uh, the director at that time in the early 90s had said that uh, when this was published, uh, they said that if abortion ever shut down in Louisiana, it would make sense to cross the border to Wascom, Texas. Uh, someone down in the Houston area had said they had land in a building that may be suitable for that abortion facility. And so it was on, it was on their radar. It was on part of their playbook. And when we realized that the legislation in Louisiana was very similar spot as it was in the early 90s, that mm -hmm. restrictions were really intense. Uh, Louisiana was viewed as the number one most pro-life state in uh, the United States. And we started hearing some chatter about maybe we'll be closing down. Well, if they closed down, they wouldn't stop doing abortions. They would be doing everything they could to fill this abortion gap between Dallas, Texas, and Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. And if they can't do it in the Louisiana state, they're going to have to cross the border to Texas. Mm -hmm. And so the passage that was really instrumental in really guiding my heart was Amos 515, which okay. says to hate evil, love good, and establish justice in the city gates. And perhaps the Lord, the God of hosts, be gracious on the remnant of Joseph. Okay that God cares about our cities. We see this all throughout scripture. Amen. And God is calling our cities to, to pass good, righteous laws Amen. that protect the people of those cities and honor the Lord. Amen. And so what we saw was we saw the city of Wascombe outlaw abortion and then city by city wow. started happening. And now we're at... 17 cities have, God. have outlawed abortion in the state of Texas. And well, we are praying. We are praying that Odessa, Texas will be one of the next sanctuary cities. We know that to make that move in our community will break chains over our community. Will will give God the room that He wants in a community to bless and to bring good things. Do you have any other testimonials of any of these cities that have made this choice and how it has impacted them? Absolutely. You know, it doesn't matter how small these cities are or how big these cities are. Uh, if they're obedient to the Lord, God will do amazing things. The city of Joaquin, Texas, city of about 850 people, okay. unanimous vote across the board. But one council member said you know, sh that she was going to vote for this ordinance, but she wanted to let everyone there know mm -hmm. that if anyone there 
found himself, she could not have children. If anyone there found himself in a place where they could not take care of that child, to let, let her know. Wow. I think it was within three days. Like, I think it was 10.30 at night. Knock on her door. And she ended up taking in a child. Wow. And so by being faithful to the Lord, by saying that babies are not going to be murdered in our cities, whether it's Joaquin, Texas, or Whiteface, Texas, yes. another amazing story, yes. the mayor of Whiteface ended up saying that so some the ACLU had sued seven cities. Okay. And now three months later, those lawsuits were withdrawn, didn't cost the cities one penny, didn't cost wow. taxpayers one penny. Uh, we saw a great victory there. But at that time, we didn't know the victory was coming. And the mayor of Whiteface, Texas, population 449, God was really putting it on her heart. And yes. she said that she feared what God would do if she didn't pass the ordinance. Amen. And she, so she feared God more than the ACLU. She feared God more than man. Amen. She said she wanted to do what's right in the eyes Before of the Lord. Before God. And so that's the key. Mm. This is, in so many ways, this is an opportunity Amen. for us to return to the Lord. Amen. For to us to say... the course. For us to, to write, say... Amen. Hate evil. Yes. Love good. Yeah. Establish justice in the city gates. Yes. What would have happened if Sodom and Gomorrah decided to do this? Yeah. To, to turn back to the Lord. They well, would have been spared. Absolutely. And we see examples of that in Scripture. Yeah. So this is a very biblical concept. Uh, it is. And, it is. and it's a very relevant concept absolutely. in this hour. And, you know, we're going to have to have Mark Lee back because... This is too good. But I challenge every city in this state, let's become sanctuary cities for the King of Kings and for the well-being of each and every one of us. The Lord bless you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Hey, welcome to WOW. You know, we want to stop today and just tell you a little bit about one of the amazing facets of Mission Messiah, and that is the WOW Warehouse and you actually can go online to wowwarehouse.org and find many of the amazing products that you find in the WOW Warehouse. One of the ways that you support Mission Messiah and the work that goes on through the mission and enables us to present encouraging television to you is through the purchase or investment in products from WOW. I'm gonna show you one of our really fun products that we have sold so many of these over the years, but they're called Soprox. But the guy, the, the inventor, creator of this piece was actually a geologist. These soap bars look like incredibly gorgeous geological rocks. Go to wildwarehouse.org and look through our assortment of some of these beautiful soaps. Put one in your bathroom. The Lord bless you.